Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom, episode 7, recorded Wednesday, April 13, uh, 2020. You're listening to Philipp Bauer uh, from Munich and my co-host... Is Fred from Dijk. Hi. Welcome, Philipp. Hi. Uh, it's been a long time since we talked. That was uh, February. Uh, a war in Europe just started. It's still going on, uh, which is terrible. Um, we both had COVID before, one before, one since. Yeah. You can guess which. It was a shit show, I guess, at, at least for me. Uh, but we're fine, both, I think. And um, so this, the Plone Newsroom is a, uh, a podcast about Plone. Plone is a content management system written in Python with a great community. And we're part of that. That's why we're doing this podcast. Uh, it's available as audio only and video. And this episode, I suggest you watch it as a video because the feature is uh, Plone 6 classic mostly. Not only, but mostly. And we're doing a lot of demoing and showing stuff. So visually show uh, off stuff. interesting. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to keep the audio explanatory, but um, well, you guess it's not the same. Philip is now moving his mouse to the left upper corner to click on the new toolbar. No, I shouldn't do that. No, 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 I shouldn't do that. <laughs> audio mentioning, uh, Philip, I, I got a, we, we are hosting the audio only version on ACAST and I got a notice from them last month that they are, are uh, uh, no longer developing their uh, iOS and or uh, uh, Android apps. So we'll, uh, if you want to listen to audio only in the future, it will be either through Apple's iOS podcast app or we'll have to uh, uh, start uh, fidget with, uh, with audio widgets on our uh, on our. On our homepage on plone.org uh, newsroom. All right. we'll, we'll figure something out that you'll find yeah. it in your, in, in your favorite podcast player. If you don't, please uh, drop us a note uh, at uh, plone.org slash newsroom, where we have our own exactly. folder on the plone.org website. So, we, we so also, Philip. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, let's continue because I've, yeah. we have a, so for our listeners, uh, 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 recording the podcast in, in approximately f 45 minutes to an hour is one thing, but we are always also preparing beforehand and we have a huge list of bullets, items that has a lot of information uh, we want to share today. So Philip, our main uh, 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 topic feature, as you said, is a Plone 6 Classic. Yeah. Uh, we kind of vow to each other, we won't record the next podcast until Alpha 4 was released. Unfortunately, <laughs> it took that, a while. That, that coincided with not us being able to record, uh, record a podcast in, in March. But Alpha 4 has been released. Uh, uh, and the, the, the most important thing for Alpha 4, Philip, well, the most important thing for Alpha 4 is, well, be, in, in, the difference between Alpha 3 and Alpha 4, the most important thing is that finally the ES6 stuff was, is being merged. We go into detail about that. That's the new JavaScript uh, setup for Plone Classic. So we're focusing mostly on Plone Classic uh, this episode. Uh, Volto will get his share, its share, uh, but this is where a lot of stuff happens. So let's uh, backtrack a little. Uh, the basics about Plone 6, um, the back end and classic, and also the front end, obviously, uh, the new one, uh, is that it runs on Python 3 only, 3.7, 8, or 9. Uh, 3.10 is coming in, I hope, soon, but it's not yet there. Um, I suggest you use the newest version because it's obviously the <coughs> fastest because most of the Python development that's going on in Python 3 is uh, uh, related to speeding, speed up. Um, I, I noticed that it's subjective, but I still notice so I've, I've, I've t testing all the Plone 6 uh, 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 releases so far and installations with Python 3.9. So Python 3.8 is the, 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 the latest, the, 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 the highest version uh, for Plone 5.2, Python 3. Uh, but I really noticed the speed up just by installing the site and then browsing a bit. Uh, and that was even before the, uh, the, the, the JavaScript and the ESX, ES6 branch merged. Uh, it's snappy. And, and that's, that's what you, as you say, I think that's, that's mainly Python 3.9. Doing this. Yeah, I guess a lot of it is Python 3.9, but also the, the, the JavaScript and th theming story uh, removed a lot of uh, overhead and we're removing a lot of dead code. So um, another thing, everyone probably knows that we're dropping archetypes for good because that was Python 2 only. We're using the newest version of Zope, which is a five dot something. It, there was a, was a new release a couple of There's days ago. There's also quite some cleanup and, yeah. and, and fixes and speed ups in there as well. And also yeah. for the build tools, uh, we have a new ZZ build out version 3.0.0 uh, release candidate 3, um, which uh, so everything yeah. is kind of new yeah. and shiny. But yeah. 
Uh, talking about Shiny, uh, the, the, the biggest change in is often a user interface stuff, the visual stuff. So we have a completely new, up, uh, or not new, a completely updated Barcelona theme based on Bootstrap 5. And um, let's say this is also the, one of the biggest change that developers say. Uh, they, 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 they feel that this is the biggest and best thing that we have in Plon 6 Classic. Because since everything is now Bootstrap 5, it's really cleaned. The te all the templates, all the user interface stuff is Bootstrap, and it's really easy to create your own uh, your own templates. Um, if if you've been developing for Volto with uh, Semantic UI, it is very similar now because you can go to these best practices that are well well documented and you copy and paste them. For, uh, and adapt them to your use case without having to reinvent the wheel. I really like this approach because funny I'm a lazy person. Funny you said that. I was always oh, 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 uh, thinking the same uh, uh, independently. Like, indeed, in Volto, you have this, you have React, so everything, uh, you, you use components. Uh, there's, of course, the semantic UI uh, uh, source and, and thing on top of that, but it's React and JavaScript all the way down. And I think now with the, with the classic uh, UI uh, uh, catch-up in, in Plunk 6 Classic, we finally get back some, uh, some part of that uh, familiarity for also maybe new developers uh, coming into uh, uh, having to support a, a, a Plunk 5 uh, or a 5226 Classic uh, project instead of uh, uh, using Volto and React. It f just feels more Similar, it's Bootstrap 5. I, I, so one of my things I had to do uh, a, another very quick Plone 5.2 project uh, uh, also in in March, and I had to go back and use Bootstrap 3. And I was like, no, I'm missing this, I'm missing that, I'm missing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's my responsive theme? <laughs> well, of course, Bootstrap 3 already had responsive top, but you know what I mean. And that's indeed, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing. There's a, a, a familiarity now with Bootstrap 5. But the, uh, Philip, it's old news. Bootstrap 5 was already there in Alpha 1 or Alpha 2 and was kind of not finished, but was wrapped up as a milestone uh, uh, already five or six months ago. Yeah, but, but it goes hand in hand with, with the whole JavaScript stuff. So let, let me start a screen share and I'll show you what it actually looks like. Um, if I find my screen, yes, there it is. So here um, we have a, a clean, fresh a Plon site. It's no add-ons installed, nothing. It's Plon 5. And uh, a couple of things uh, spring. Uh, you, see, you see them instantly. Uh, one is the new uh, toolbar. Uh, the toolbar is changed. It, uh, you can expand it and it automatically uh, expands. Uh, I don't know, retracts again. It's implemented with, um, how's it called? Off canvas, obviously with bootstrap. Um, so if you click there, you have, uh, the user interface and you have all these buttons to add stuff and uh, ex execute actions. And, uh, if you go away, uh, it just uh, retracts and gets out of your way. It also has an option to go, uh, to move to the top, uh, which works nicely. Um, yeah, so you have the horizontal layout on top, yes. like uh, uh, some other uh, open source CMS. Uh, yeah, CMS exactly. Have. So that that can be configured here. Toolbar position on top. Just move move that on top, and suddenly I have my toolbar on the top here with my drop down uh, options. This is obviously not super exciting because we had a toolbar before, but the uh, JavaScript and the CSS of the old toolbar was hugely complex. And it's uh, much, much cleaner now and much easier um, as, and, and faster and easier to, to, uh, to also adapt to your, to your needs and it gets out of your way. So another thing when you, when you make the site smaller, you see the, uh, the mobile navigation, yeah. uh, the burger menu. And again, this is off canvas, a uh, bootstrap off canvas again. So the mobile navigation with built in search and live search is um, oh, not fi finding anything for plone. Uh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Why, why can't I find anything? Well, the UI um, is finished. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I, what I modified. Um, so this is the, the search bar moved into the navigation and the same with the mobile navigation. So in the mobile navigation, you now have that, which makes it really nice to use uh, in, a, in a mobile um, environment. So uh, all of the 
the whole page, the navigation, the breadcrumbs, the content is all done with bootstrap CSS classes. And it's all, um, it, it uses these same defaults and uh, works really nicely. It has a, a nice thing that I, I can show easily by yeah, removing so text. <laughs> Just do, I'll remove some text now and I save the site. And what you realize is that the footer is not, uh, is sticky now. The footer is stuck to the bottom. It's, it's, ah, it's you the, don't the, get the these, small yeah. things that make your life as a visitor of a site nicer because you don't, as a, and as a developer also, because you don't have to do that because usually uh, a client says, what's the footer doing in the middle of my browser window? That is ugly. I want it sticky on the, on the bottom. And Peter Holzer, he moved it to the bottom just, it's, I don't know, two weeks ago. Yeah, this is the whole uh, uh, develop for uh, uh, flexible for flexible content, and we always develop with huge pages. But then sometimes I had this 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 annoying bug, and I think it was Plone Four, where uh, uh, some people would uh, uh, indeed have create a page with no content, and then the drop down for add new item, etc., was kind of hidden because it was cut off by no content, because I did something wrong in the theme. I'm not I'm not a front ender, uh, um, so yeah, that's. Uh, but then we, we don't have that drop down. Philip, one personal thing. What do you think about the, the, the collab collapsing of the uh, sub menu items to the toolbar? I still um, have to get used to it. I don't, I'm not yeah, sure it, if it, this it is me a while. good UX. It, it took me a while, but I, uh, then I liked it because it, the toolbar doesn't, doesn't grow in exponentially. Uh, if you just, just because you click a button. So I'm pretty happy with, uh, with, with that, that you see that when I click on manager, the add new toolbar, ex, uh, retracts. And, and I think that totally that, makes well, that's sense. The whole, that's that. Yeah. But that's the nastiest one where it collapses upwards and the button you click <laughs> suddenly becomes another click uh, button uh, down your mouse button. So I, I do realize it's the lesser of, 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 uh, uh, more evils where we have, I mean, there's always the fight for, for screen real estate. Uh, but I'm not convinced yet about this wiggling of the menus and, and, and <clears throat> yeah, I said it, I said it, continue. He, he said it. <laughs> um, well, as usual, a lot of, uh, opinions exist in the world. So for example, uh, I was in favor of expanding the toolbar on Hoover and people said, go away, Philip, you're stupid. And, um, you can, by the way, you can pin the toolbar. So it's always expanded, but we've dropped the option where the, uh, re the, the, comp the, comp the, how do you say the, the small toolbar, the, um, has icons and user interface. So this is just now clickable. So you don't have to, uh, just go by the icons because some, some actions are just not really self-explaining by an icon. Um, yeah. and I, 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 it took me a while, like all user interfaces, obviously S same with the Volto user interface. It also took me a while. Uh, I s it still have major issue with some of the dis uh, design decisions. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, and I think, uh, so f for you to try that out, the best thing is to go to, uh, six dash classic dot demo dot plone dot org uh, it's obviously linked to from the plone org website it has the uh, latest uh, nightly build uh, so this is the current core dev actually has more features than alpha six uh, just two tiny things and hmm. bug fixes uh, but more is coming in every week every day and you can you can see that uh, also the yeah i don't know not that's not too much to explain, but one thing that is really nice and drives home the, the whole bootstrap thingy, uh, is, uh, the test rendering page. So that has been around for ages. It's, it's called. It, indeed. Indeed. I, I didn't realize it was there until, uh, uh, quite late already middle of my, my plone development career. Like, oh, there's a test rendering where all most of the, or all of the, uh, used widgets and styles, uh, should should be there yeah like a, a kind lot of, of mini, a mini design system it, it could it could be improved obviously but um so it has the the plone um, um alert messages on on the first tab and we just we we, we were we're lazy we're plone developers that's um we're lazy so we just included the whole bootstrap cheat sheet i click here and i get the whole bootstrap cheat sheet actually from Bootstrap. So this is uh, the, the link to the cheat sheet is here and you can, uh, you can, uh, can I click the link? Yeah, here, 
that is the whole HTML of that is in here and you can see it in Plone. You can see the typography stuff, the, the images, the tables, the figures, the forms. So these crazy forms, you can now build them in, uh, in, in Plone and they style well because we just, we, we have all the bootstrap goodies, uh, the default alerts, all, all that stuff. Uh, let's see what's exciting. Uh, the accordion obviously is, uh, useful in, in a lot of cases. Uh, we have this buttons, cards, carousel, yeah, yeah, drop okay. down. Stop, and, stop showing off Bootstrap so 5. We know that. But the interesting part is if you have your Moodles. own theme, if you have your own theme, then this is loaded on top of your theme if you customize it. So you can still verify also with your custom theme because this test rendering is, I assume, coming from product CMF plan itself. Yes, it is. And uh, as also linked with some documentation to the icons. I'm, we're getting to that uh, in a second. Yes, so, icons. One of the other improvements yeah, made. One, uh, one of the uh, last we month. also have. We now have images in the live search. So images show up if you go to the live search and you have an image. I don't have an image here, but the demo side has an image. I guess it does. Let's search for image. Um, but it's it's you. It's there it is. Optional. You have it. You yeah, have but a... you have to turn it on. It's not. No, it's not. No, it's enabled on by default. default. It's I on mean... by default now. Okay, but you can turn it off. I think with the registry setting. Yes, you or can turn it, there's, a, there's a checkbox where you can, uh, and, and a control panel where you can decide yep. uh, which uh, scale it should have. So if you have an image-centric website, it, that is probably uh, very useful. If you have only a few images, that's probably not that, that important. And like many settings, if you migrate a site to Plone 6, this will not be switched on automatically because it would change your user experience and that your clients would yeah. complain about, hey, why do I suddenly yeah. have weird images in my, uh, in my, in my um, quick search, uh, live search. So this is something you get when you enable it or you start to create a new site. Uh, yeah. Similar with uh, many other things. Talking about have, Im yes. Philip, talking about images, uh, also between Alpha 3 and 4, I think the uh, plip landed where we have added uh, uh, two or three more new image scales uh, to the default image list, and we've adapted one or two of the existing ones. And I think those are also, I mean, there's still discussion on, on what more we can do uh, uh, concerning image handling in, in Plan 6 before it's released. But at least these image scales were also added and one uh, existing scale was, I think, changed, which is a very minor change. It's only 30 or 40 pixels. But that's also something I think that's only turned on now by default if you install a new classic site. But if you upgrade, I think it's not... I think it's not changed yet, but that's also the same kind of discussion. What should you do between upgrading a site uh, programmatically or creating a new classic site? Yeah, th there was a funny discussion. How, 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 how do you scale the word uh, larger? It's like larger, larger, largestest, uh, the largestest. Uh, so now we have large, larger, great, and huge. And huge is uh, 1,600 uh, pixels uh, wide, and the, the height is um, at, a, at a maximum. Um, so th these are modern image scales, how you work with them. Uh, and what you mentioned, what's still going on is the work to add a configuration for source sets uh, to Plone. Uh, that's not yet merged, uh, but Mike uh, Der Stappen is working on that, and that control panel would, will also apply to Volto. As far as I've heard, uh, Volto is not using it yet, but they have thought that through already. Okay. So that's about images, but there's more. I remember there already being some kind of source of support created also by uh, 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 Nicolas Sambello uh, last year at, uh, at the Plone conference. But uh, indeed, that's some, what I just said. With, uh, image handling is something that I like. There, there's still, I think there's some low-hanging hanging fruit there we could pick. Uh, uh, with fixing these now that we have uh, both a m more modern JavaScript uh, 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 support in Plan 6 Classic. And of course, Volto is JavaScript all the way down. So you can also have much better uh, uh, dynamic support there for images. Um, can you tell me a bit about the funny uh, uh, 65K there in the scale? Uh, actually, actually not. Um, I, I, I heard that with one ear and I decided um, that's weird. I'll just ignore that. Um, you'll probably have your reasons why you do that. I guess it's some kind of best practice because a screen uh, can only have a, uh, a certain height. I, don't ask me. 
I think it's it's a it's it's a current uh, well clutch is a bit of a, of, a, of a harsh word, but it's it's now a kind of uh, coding there to say to uh, always uh, keep respecting the aspect ratio because in the old way it was 400, 400, 200, 200, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, which is all also square, uh, always square. But that would also mean that it would limit the the images in the bounding box uh, also by the uh, if you have an image in portrait mode, then it would also get shrunk to something, and then your width would get less than. Uh, uh, the current scaling. So, like I said, this is this is still some work in progress uh, um, that has already been added to Alpha Four, um, and I think we'll talk a bit later on the on the sprint subject in the podcast. Yeah. So, so images live search, Tiny MC finally. Yeah, Tiny MC. So finally, we moved to Tiny MC Five, and like basically the day we moved to Tiny MC Five, uh, these crazy people release tiny mc6 so now we're planning to move to tiny mc6 um okay uh but let's talk about tiny mc5 just for a second it looks nice it looks uh, basically the same as uh before has a bit cleaner user interface it's very nice uh, to, to configure um it, it there's one nice uh I can, I can show you why this is still an alpha. I click on the paragraph button in TinyMC, just editing a page at the moment. And when I click here, there is an infinite scroll list of crazy styles that are, I don't know where they come from. The uh, we five just realized the, that today. It's, it's the bootstrap, bootstrap 5 test rendering. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's all in there. This is so funny. Uh, we just realized that an hour ago while uh, while we were sprinting on Plon 6 Classic. How, where is that coming from? Interesting. Yeah, but there's yeah. N something nice that you also see. If you, you select this uh, paragraph here and you select the style inline, you now have, I think Mike added this, text in two columns or text in three columns option, which is, well, obviously with modern CSS is a really easy small uh, CSS uh, setting. Just col calls equals two, I think. That's just a super basic stuff um, so the tiny MC works really nicely it's um, it is cleaned up with planning to move to uh, tiny MC e6 and just today so this is a preview for alpha 5 or beta uh, just today I merged a tiny feature which is nice um, I will so I can't go to the demo I can Philip, go to are the you demo using site, the I'm not doing that. you using the podcast to show off your development uh, no that was <laughs> actually not that was Hannes Hannes work because <laughs> ah, I, I wanted to do something uh, complex and he said this is really easy Philip why don't you do that and go oh god why should I waste so many hours so I added a checkbox run tiny MC in inline mode and when I save and I go to my document and I edit my document here uh, let's add some text. Here is a text area now. And if you, you see that uh, tiny MCE now works in inline mode. So if you click here, you suddenly get your toolbar. It should appear on the top, not uh, on the side here. Yeah, the, the, ah, the huge is. benefit here is that you really get, uh, it's, it's a WYSIWYG thing. So it really, it uses the styles of the site and not the styles that you include in tiny MCE uh, in the iframe that is uh, using by default. Yeah, you can overwrite editing. it in the in the control panel. You can have an access CSS. It, it, normally imports, it, it normally imports it normally imports the 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 plone theme as well, and then you can still add add other styles in there. But now it's completely yeah, nice. Yeah. I think that there's also development-wise something to mention here. Uh, Plan five until uh, also including up and including Plan five two still use Tiny MC four and four to five in Tiny MCE is my okay. Maybe they improved a lot of things, but there's a really large shift there where Tiny MCE also did what we are now doing in 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 Plan five to six, uh, moving our uh, in in the classic UI the story to ES six modules and other modern support. That's what happened with Tiny MCE yes. between version four and version five, which is also why it makes it a bit difficult to uh, uh, upgrade uh, the tiny MCE in Plone 5 uh, to tiny MCE 5 because the whole distribution of tiny MCE has changed. And I must say, tiny uh, the, the the company behind tiny uh, uh, tiny Inc or what uh, it's called, they they've kind of burned their ships a bit because there's also uh, uh, not that much documentation to be found anymore on tiny MCE 4. 
almost like they're ashamed of their old release and they've already <laughs> hidden it. But that's, yeah. that's Tiny MC5 is complete ES6 modules, which is also why it now makes it uh, so much easier in Plan 6 Classic UI to integrate uh, Tiny MC5. So I, I hope that I, I don't know of, an, of another paradigm shift uh, the last two or three years. So I assume Tiny MC6 will be just as ES6 module supported uh, uh, as, as version 5. So I, I hope that the the effort to to upgrade uh, a, a Plone six point one version or six point two version to Tiny MCE uh, uh, six or maybe even before uh, a Plone six final will be less uh, will cost us less effort. Yeah, you can do crazy things with the inline in, inline mode that you shouldn't do. For example, just uh, add a usable accordion while editing. So not sure if that is something people want to have, because uh, yeah, but. Um, just a tiny, tiny thing. So uh, the whole uh, theme thing is, uh, is 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 great. It's really easy to work on. Also, it's just npm install and npm watch in in uh, uh, plone theme uh, dot Barceloneta. And uh, it's much easier to customize because it's super clean. It uses bootstrap all the way down. So it's much nicer to create a new theme or reuse a theme that actually uses bootstrap, like, I don't know, 80% of the themes that are available on the web. When I was hearing that for the first time, I was wondering, why, why do I need, need Barcelonetta LTS in an NPM package? And then I only later I realized, oh, wait, when I do a custom theme, I now occasionally just copied the less folder yes. of the official Plone theme Barcelonetta into my own theme so that in my uh, main uh, uh, less or, or SAS file, I could import the, uh, the Barcelonetta stuff. And that's now with the NPM package of Barcelonetta LTS in your package JSON, you just say dev dependency at the LTS, and you can import from there. Yeah, LTS. That's, that's it's the not whole called L LTS. It's a, that's an oh, internal it? name, long-term support. It's just Bolton Plone theme Barcelona. We're just moving to the next version. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but that, that's that's the whole NPM thought. Like, oh, I don't have to manage with Python pulling in a package when the in this case developing the theme is a, a Webpack. Uh, 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 oriented uh, 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 workflow where I can just use NPM or Yarn or whatever to install uh, the sources from Barcelona so I can uh, extend them. Yeah. So what you don't see, so the, a lot of that, what we just showed is uh, is user interface stuff. And a lot of that was also in previous alpha versions. What you don't see is under the whole, the whole JavaScript story was redone and we removed all the required JS stuff. So the whole JavaScript story is modernized. It's obviously, it's not React, this is not Volto, but for a classic site, this is a very modern uh, setup and it's really now getting much harder to shoot yourself in the foot with what, which was really easy early, if in earlier versions uh, with the required JS hell uh, when, uh, I don't know, jQuery was undefined and stuff uh, happened that you didn't expect. Uh, and now it's really easy to um, to 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 work uh, do JavaScript development work in Plone. Uh, so at the core of that has been work that Hannes Ragam did, uh, modernizing all of mockup, rec moving required JS from there. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, work also went into re uh, delivering these uh, these resources. Then so the resource registry was completely redone. Um, I'll show you the ritual registry first uh, in, in a second, but um, mockup, which holds all the JavaScript patterns, for example, for the uh, for the folder contents. If I click on contents, I get this this listing of contents. So all of that um, is 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 a is is called a pattern, and this is all in mockup. And mockup used to be a Python egg, and now it's just an npm package. Uh, which makes it much easier to include and update and less 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 work basically. And the installations also simply do yarn install and then npm run start webpack. Obviously, this is documented, so you don't have to memorize that. And then you have webpack running, and instead of a JavaScript resource in the um, in in the file system, it gives you a URL that you can then include. And I can show you. How, how how the inclusion basically works. So in the site setup, we removed all the uh, the whole old resource registry and all the f fancy but uh, hard to use features uh, that it had 
are now gone and now you have simple bundles all of uh, you only have bundles there's no more resources or bundle resources there's no more depends on there's no more through the web compilation with uh, what was it rjs and less uh, uh, js so, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking should should we try to explain the whole system from Plong five two in in five to ten minutes? But no. um, it took me three years to finally comprehend it, so I could could, could change things there myself. Um, so exactly. the resource registry isn't gone from Plong five two to Plong six. Uh, 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 for the classic uh, uh, JavaScript and resource deployment, but indeed we've removed all the resources. So the whole idea of Plone 5, when it was developed uh, between 2012, 2013, 2015, was that the, 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 the whole, the bundling of all the resources and dependencies you would need on the front end. So for example, you would want to show a date picker, then you would have a date picker JavaScript component that had to be transported to the, to the front end somehow. To do that efficiently, you don't want to send a thousand different JavaScript files on your server, so you want to bundle them. And we try to do all that inside Plone. We try to do all that stuff inside Plone, uh, also through the browser uh, to support, still support some kind of halfway uh, 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 through the web uh, 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 development story. But I think I think we we, are, we have to we can fairly say that kind of broke down uh, uh, halfway 2015 2016, where all this development all moved to JavaScript modules and all moved to the command line. So you. We all we all always supported uh, both bundling, creating a bundle on the command line, like all the fancy other uh, front ends, and also with Volto you're doing. You're using Webpack to build your resources, and with Plone we were again a bit too far ahead. We tried to do that all. Uh, 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 inside Plone itself, and the enabler for that was indeed require JS, which was a kind of bundler for the front end, which was developed around 2008 or 2009, and was very popular uh, uh, for two or three years. And then everybody moved on, and we were stuck with require JS in Plone 5, uh, enabling all these fancy things. Um, but now you see it with Volto, also Volto, you bundle and you build your folder front end on the command line. And now with Plone 6 classic way, you will also bundle and build your resources on the command line. Exactly. And then the only this, thing- this, It's using the best practices. Yeah, um, this is Webpack. really best Obviously practices. Obviously people have different opinions. Some people hate Webpack. I'm, if it's well configured and I just have to run the command that I just did, there was uh, npm run start webpack and I suddenly I get a URL that uh, gives me the uh, the minified bundle and it has hot reloading. So I edit something and click save and the URL is automatically updated. This is a development experience that I only had in Volto for the React front end previously. And now I have that in Plone 6 Classic in the core, like not in my custom fancy my company set up but in the core and that is really really nice and because you have es6 modules it's way way easier to include uh, a bit of extra javascript or whatever in your theme or in your uh, uh in, yeah in, in your site setup uh, where previously you would have to understand require as first and you would un have to understand our whole resources and bundling system uh, to put everything right there correctly in the resource registry, and then you would run an arcane command on the command line that would actually start up Plone, pull the resource and bundle information from the site, and then use a bundling system locally to create the bundle again. <laughs> Yeah. You don't. I, 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 we still have projects that do stuff like that. Crazy. Yeah, that's the nasty part. We still, we, we, I, we still have projects uh, that we're going to m move to Plone Six as soon as possible. Yes, exactly. Just but that's, of it's going to be fun. It's going to be easier. So, and it's really easy to create if you have a, a snippet of JavaScript that you just need. You just pull it in. This is, for example, this is a, a slightly modernized version of the uh, of from when you edit an event and you uh, you have a start date and you move the start date into the future then the end date is automatically updated dated so you can't have an event that starts on wednesday and stops on the same monday which obviously wouldn't work uh, so these are just tiny tiny things that we uh one tiny thing that we left as a uh, a custom um not custom as its own bundle and just to show that it's possible and really easy to do and it's all uh, it's all going to be documented but let's uh, we're going to get to the documentation you can still use jquery by the way so it's all here 
So here's jQuery. There's Bootstrap JS. So we're pulling in that in because we use that, for example, here. This is an accordion, uh, which also means if you break Bootstrap JS, you won't be able to expand them. Uh, there needs to be a fallback, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it's alpha. Yeah. Uh, but it works so fine. Again, as we said, yeah, this this does mean the end of of quite a few uh, through the web very advanced things you were able to do. And it's not that I'm I'm cheering like, okay, thanks, uh, so great that we removed through the web. The the problem with uh, this part of through the web is was that it was very arcane and it was very difficult to support, and it didn't follow the whole uh, ES module uh, guidelines. And and that's I think the main reason why we had to uh, yeah, remove part of this through the web functionality. It just got too too uh, complex and too old-fashioned, yes. and we had to depend on old technology. Yeah. Still, you can still in the theme you can just create uh, through the web. Uh, you can uh, add extra. We still have a custom CSS. I, I remember there was a talk by Hannes Ragam, I think, at the Plonconf in Barcelona, uh, where he gave a talk like everything explained about the uh, resource registry, and um, the, the, the gist was basically you can do everything. You just have to understand it. And a lot of people went out of the talk. And having understood that, but the other half, like the other lot, um, was still super clueless how, how how that actually works because it broke for them in so many cases. So he had a change of mind and he did the whole rewriting. And thanks uh, to Hannes and thanks to Syslab who sponsored his work for that. Uh, we, we now have a very clean up uh, yeah. system, uh, JavaScript uh, system. Uh, Jens did uh, did the resource registry by sp actually uh, most of that, and it it sits on top of a uh, Python package called Web Resource um, by Ah oh, <laughs> Should have prepared. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you know. I I, I mean, I know. yeah. No, not me, not me. So, no, Philip, no, uh, to speed to to play timekeeper again, we should speed up a bit. Um, yes, we you should wrote speed down up. More, more features. Indeed, we already quickly mentioned it. There's a new icon resolver uh, to get, which kind of uh, uh, removes the hard coded font awesome stuff. Exactly, and if um, you go to the demo side, you can see the icon resolver in action really nicely. So, all content types have new icons, updated icons, and where do you get the item icons from? Obviously, from Bootstrap. So here. We have all the bootstrap icons. So if you find something and you want to use that, just um, copy the name and uh, you can use use it in your clone uh, theme and site. And uh, there is a there's still a tiny bit of work to be done with the uh, icon resolver in the um, in the folder contents. Um, but it, it it works really nicely and it's also nicely documented. We're not going into too much detail, but it's it's really easy to use and every template has icons uh, already defined. So if you say icons dot tag and give it the name of the um, of the bootstrap icon, it automatically run, renders the SR uh, the image with SRC tag. That's what Convenient. the icon resolver does. That is really so... nice. We already talked about the image skills. Let's skip that part. Well, that's also work still being done on it. Um, yep. There's another a convenient thing. Mind types, uh, mind type icons. Oh, Here, mind type icons. We have a nice PDF icon finally, and a lot of other uh, mind types. Not a lot actually, only six uh, that I added. But um, if if you need more, it's really not easy to add a mind type icons. So this is we have Word, spreadsheet, PDF, uh, even even nostalgia, PowerPoint nostalgia stuff. in the PDF logo, with the, which is kind of a bit of the Adobe logo there. Just the yeah, Adobe but it's, there. it's every, everybody knows it's that. Yeah, it's that a cool thing. Yeah. So then, Dexterity Text Indexer. It's been lying around for years uh, uh, as an add-on package, and that's now going to be moved to core? It, it It's already moved into core. It's part of Alpha 4. Um, so it's easy to uh, mark a field in any of your content type schemas as searchable uh, in Python and also in XML schemata. And there are adapters for all kinds of fields. And if you have a super crazy field that has is not uh, searchable yet, uh, you can write your own adapter. Um, it's really was a very uh, frequently used community add-on, and it's finally moved into the core thanks to uh, Plone Royalty. Did you know that we have Plone Royalty? And I'm not talking about like famous Plone people. We have an actual prince in the Plone community. Yeah, you, Prince Charming. No. <laughs> 
Not the first no, uh, no, the, the first he's name. Actually, he's he's all, it's actually Philip. Yeah. The same uh, first name. F yeah, F Philip Prince. Uh, what's his name? Prince von. God, I remember a lot. Ausberg. Ausberg, yeah, Prince Philip von Ausberg, and he <laughs> he has a coat of arms, and he, he did all the work for the including the dexterity. Dexterity Text Indexer. I just basically clicked merge, so I'm getting part of. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to become royalty. Okay, uh, Philip, looking through the list, I think that's one thing we should at least mention. With uh, where Jens and some other people are still working on is by removing cyclic dependencies. That's also a development thing. Uh, I hear it from my colleague Ma Maurits, our release manager. Uh, they're still working on it, and it's 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 been an annoying thing, uh, uh, mainly because also of the uh, uh, search for supporting. PIP based installs um, where you go, uh, uh, where you want to install Plone purely on using PIP. And then also it's very dependent which package depends on another package. And there's been some reshuffling being done at the moment on a specific branch. I think it hasn't been merged yet. Uh, but we're trying to remove now some of the cyclic dependency issues by adding Plone base. That, that is also part of Plone for uh, Alpha 4. Uh, six alpha. It's, 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 it, it, it has is, landed. It has. It has oh, wow. merged. Yeah, we, we were pretty crazy with the merge button in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Plum base is merged, and all the interfaces and a lot of utilities are now merged into a uh, move to Plum base. There are obviously BBB imports, which are like uh, backwards compatibility imports. Uh, so these are uh, you get this little log message that you're using a deprecated import and stuff like that. So that's already merged, but there is still a lot of cleanup being done. A lot of that by Jens. I love his pull requests in the last couple of days because most of them are actually removing code. A lot of old code that was dead is being removed and uh, makes the code base lighter and obviously easier to manage. Uh, it's really if, if you look for something and you don't know what it does and you don't find where it's used uh, that is really irritating for a uh, non super experienced developer and the less we have of that the better it is uh, there are uh, three things uh, just quickly to be mentioned uh, that have been part of Plan 6 from the very beginning. These are, there's a relation control panel now where you can manage and inspect relations. There's a module in Plone API to work with the relations. And the dexterity site route, so if you go to the site route, is now a Plone, uh, a, a, a dexterity object. And the dexterity site route, the Plone site route is a dexterity object. But this is old news, basically. Yeah. Uh, so to sum up um, about that, um, these are a, a huge amount of uh, some smaller, some bigger changes and tweaks that make uh, the life of readers. Think about the uh, the navigation and the search of editors. Think about the, the forms and the validation and the the the, the accessibility uh, in, in, in for mobiles, uh, but also for managers. Uh, think about the pip install and the speed of development with Python 3. And for developers uh, where, with a clean code base, much, much easier in the future. And I'm, I'm, I'm hugely happy about the state that Plone 6 Classic is in at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so one of those, those, those development tasks that are always, that are that you can't plan and you can't really budget for is that Browsers are upgraded all the time, and I've had it again this year that one or two or three smaller things they've used to work for years, and then suddenly a customer calls, look, I can't press this button anymore, or this and this doesn't work, and then it's a security thingy or something else, and, and then you look, and then one of the components that's, that we use that supported it uh, uh, kind of broke down because of this change in the browser. Then you have to dig down and see if you can update this component. And this, this, is, a, this is a hidden iceberg story. What people don't realize is that it also, it doesn't matter if it's open source or not, but we're, we're build, always building on other modules and components. And the easier it is, it, it gets to swap out a component with an updated version where somebody fixed a browser incompatible compatibility issue, uh, the better you can still up, update and, and maintain the system. And that's something with Plone 6 Classic that's really important that we're up again with the latest bootstrap, we're up with the latest ES6 modules, we have updated most of the components, we have cleaned up a lot of stuff, and it makes maintaining a Plone site uh, 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 
after you upgrade. It doesn't only make upgrading the site to Plone 6 easier because there's less components and it's cleaner, but it will also mean that maintaining a Plone 6 classic site will be uh, much easier. And, and, and much easier by, I mean by, uh, uh, it will take you less time or it will at least give you less surprises because it's way cleaner of how to, how to update a component in which part of the site. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a true benefit, so an untold benefit that you won't, you won't see, uh, uh, uh until you start maintaining a plan six site. Yeah. And, um, like, there are two things. Uh, one is a, a huge thanks to, to all the people who worked on that. Um, and I've, I've been part of the, the, the weekly sprints from, from time to time. I dropped in and did some stuff. Uh, but every Wednesday when I came, also a lot of other people were there. There was Peter Holzer was almost always there. Uh, Peter Mattis, Jens Klein, Johannes Ragam, Stefan Antonelli did a lot of work in the Mike earlier, earlier versions. Mike Destappen was always there. Uh, you were there often. Mauritz was most all, all, also almost every there every Wednesday uh, working away and a lot of other people. And uh, this is, and um, you have to keep in mind that all of that is unpaid work or most of that is unpaid work because n no client tells you, Hey, I, I need a w new website. So you've got to develop clone six classic for us. And we say, yeah, that's going to take you, I don't know, 500 hours probably. And you'll have to pay for that. No, no client does that, but uh, we all develop uh, projects and we're, we've been using clone six uh, for the last two years, actually for it, various projects in various stages. And now it, that it's coming to fruition, it's really, it's, it's really good to see that. And um, this is, when still not talking about Volto, which is so exciting in its own uh, right. So th this is one thing. And what, what else did I want to say? A lot of add-ons you know. already work on, pl uh, work on Plone 6, uh, like, um, I don't know, a lot. We're, we're talking about one at uh, the very yeah, end. Yeah, one at the end. I mean, that, keep that one to the end, indeed, I'd <laughs> yeah, say. But yeah, so most... thanks again. There's a, yeah. a lot of people have been working on, on also supporting Classic UI, getting it f further. There's also, I say, it's, 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 it's the UI part we've been discussing now, but there's also a lot of work in the background being done on uh, on the core system, uh, uh, on REST API, on making that quicker. Uh, uh, and that will also, of course, benefit Volto. I mean, we just mentioned the disparity site route. The disparity site yes. route is one of the things that really uh, uh, helps Volto because it allows you to enable the block behavior on the plan site route. Because we were always joking, we have like two content type systems, but we had actually three. We had archetypes, we had dexterity, and there was the plan site route, which was its, its own singular uh, uh, content type there. Yeah, all, um, all these things, dexterity, the text indexer, that's, uh, it's all used by Volto as well. So the whole, everything that is uh, related to the backend is there. Obviously, Bootstrap 5 is of no interest to Volto, which is fine. Yeah. So, Moving um, on. to continue, uh, the, the feature was Classic UI. Of course, there has already also been a lot of uh, Volto uh, uh, development. I, I normally I quite I, I follow photo development uh, 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 quite well. Even though I'm not I'm not a developer, I'm not actively devel developing on photo. I'm all, I'm the guy nagging about uh, user interface issues and other things that when I try to install it again after a month and then something small breaks. I had the same thing this morning again, but I, I figured it out. Uh, but so we had a last podcast at uh, uh, on uh, recorded on February the, 8th, the 28th, and photo 15 uh, was released uh, uh, already halfway uh, halfway that month in March 15th and there has been have been four uh, minor releases so we're now on Volto 15.4 uh, I didn't have that much time last month to check on, on Volto because I was very heavily working uh, for a, for a client Plum 5.2 project so I'm now this week moving back to to Volto picking up things uh, seeing what has been uh, done um, Volto 15 was released. Uh, there was a bit of discussion uh, in the last podcast. I said, "Oh, uh, uh, Volto 14 will be the uh, will be the, the 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 maintenance version, and Volto 15 will probably have the slate uh, 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 the slate editor change." That's not that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Volto 15 Volto 15 was released because of a security uh, 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 feature issue. Uh, I th don't think it was that big, and if it was very big, I wouldn't explain it in detail here. <laughs> responsible disclosure, um, but it did force uh, uh, the Volto uh, releases to have a, a major version. So Volto 15 is uh, uh, 
still uh, in line with Volto 13, 14, 15. Uh, it has some nice features. It has lazy loading for DraftJS. This is especially important, I think, but probably somebody will correct me later, uh, if you already switch to using Volto Slate, because it will now mean that lazy loading different components that they won't get loaded if you don't use or, or call them. Uh, so it will uh, help you to keep your initial bundler much smaller. And I assume that the integration of Photo Slate will also use this lazy loading. There's a preview image component now. Um, there, uh, translations have been added uh, to mention specifically Spanish and Basque languages. And there has been done behind the scenes a lot of wizardry on the documentation part. Uh, we've mentioned it before, uh, for Plan 6 we will have to do, uh, uh, there's a huge effort to upgrade our documentation to, uh, uh, to the latest standards. Also, it means uh, uh, integrating the, uh, the documentation into three new main chapters. And one of those chapters is the Volto front end, where the code is now copied directly from the Volto uh, code repository, which has a subdirectory docs. And there's now automatic CI CD magic happening in the background. If there's a commit to the docs uh, subdirectory, then it will automatically also rebuild uh, the, our documentation live, which is really, really, really cool. If you, you can test our, uh, the new upcoming Plan 6 official documentation, if you go to docsphotocms.com, uh, which was the uh, URL for the existing photo front end documentation, it's now redirecting you to the uh, preview uh, uh, build of the new documentation setup. Yeah, so if you, if you want to test uh, not only the documentation, but uh, Volto, uh, the newest version of Volto, you go to uh, 6.demo.plon.org and you get uh, Volto 15.3. So, um, Victor, maybe you want to update that to 15.4 at some point. Um, <laughs> what we didn't mention last time is it now has the blocks, uh, the, how's it called? The, not blocks, uh, the grid block. Uh, I think we didn't mention that this is now included in, in the, the Volto release. In, in the demo uh, site. In the mean, demo because... site. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, that's, that's another thing new we will, we'll talk about later indeed, about the grid block. So I, I test, dri uh, test driven to test drive, test drift, to, to test test drove, 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 drove driven. Ah, driven. drive. Oh, we had to do that in, in, in English class uh, when I was young. You had to learn like 120 irregular conjugations. Not my, not yeah, my I have to do that job. with my kids. So, but uh, I, I squared my machine. This is, uh, I shared my screen. This is actually a uh, 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 photo as you, as you know it, but the thingy, it runs on alpha four. So that's the part I verified. If you want to do this yourself, uh, that's all fine. But if you create a new plone site, if you create a new new backend plone site, which you can do if you run the alpha for locally and you create a new plone site, there's a small, I think it's a bug, but I don't know yet where it is. Don't do this default with English USA, uh, but select uh, uh, normal English or uh, just Dutch or, but don't use the, uh, the, the second one uh, between. How come your browser says English USA? Because for, for me, when I create a new blonde site, it says language German, uh, unless I disable JavaScript. Ah, that's because I, I have my, ah, thank you, Philip. That's because I, oh, we do some live debugging here. Because I, I switched my uh, default language to English, but apparently on Mac, it's by default now switching to English USA. And then if you have that site, then that means that in the site itself, uh, like here in the language control panel. Thank you. That's probably the cause why it's happening to me locally again and not with uh, anybody else doing this. So I had here English USA, but then it has show country specific language variants. Yeah. You and that means you, you get that. EN US, EN uh, GB for Great Britain. And apparently Volto, uh, current Volto c cannot handle it or shouldn't handle it or, uh, uh, um, and, and I was like, why doesn't it work? My photo site doesn't show up. And then I found out I switched it back to English and English. I had to change the, the first site and then you have photo. So um, another uh, community effort that's going on is upgrading uh, uh, the Plone.org website to new Plone.org. I just stole and copied a bit of the configuration uh, to add uh, 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 some tiles there, which is the slate editor tile, but there's still some, another nice thingy I found out about is with one of these, and I don't know yet in which one of it it is, but there's a maps block oh, now. Yeah. Did I, is it I created specifically been, for Plum Org? for a while already. 
okay, I found it out uh, this morning, like uh, with adding these other uh, uh, things there. So then you can go to Google Maps, do sharing, copy uh, the URL there, and go back to here, and you will have your block in here. Yeah. And of course, the other blocks, uh, which are indeed uh, to talk about is the grid block, which is, I think this is the Kit Concept grid block, where you can indeed do this. Can I now just yep. drag this to... No, I can't. I can't. Um, can I drop it in there? Drop the, the map in the grid? Not sure. No, that doesn't work yet. Add a new. Should, I don't know you if can it should add work. a new. Uh... Yeah, I could just add a map here again. Yeah. No, it's not here in there. Oh, that's limited. Maybe it's uh, constrained to some that makes sense in this case. But I, I tried it out with the images and t uh, various text uh, items, and it worked really nicely, yeah. and it's easy to, to, to extend. Uh, so the whole blocks thing in Volto is is the power horse, and it's also a unique selling point uh, because we have, well, not unique, maybe not unique, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just exciting, and there are so many uh, blocks coming out um, and a lot of companies are developing blocks and I know that there are blocks in the pipeline to be released by various uh, companies. <laughs> for example, Red Turtle uh, did a lot of exciting work for the Plone.org relaunch and they created these mockups and layouts that we will show at some point. Uh, and uh, they actually wrote the Volto blocks that go with it to, uh, so that you're imp able to implement these, uh, these layouts. And Kit Concept also has a lot of blocks uh, that are in the pipeline. So I'm, I'm excited about what's coming uh, out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the, 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 uh, the difference in, in focus at the moment on what is coming out of each of the, uh, of the finalization projects for Plan 6 to finish the front ends. Uh, in, in Classic UI, you see now this, this huge effort by, by, by people working at their own companies or working at an institution or uh, uh, whatever, spending time on, on now moving Classic UI, to, to, which, is, which is now kind of like a big bang when the ES6 stuff uh, uh, landed and now shows a lot of progress that has been made. But there's also a lot of silent, uh, bit hidden progress on the photo part, where indeed what you say, Philip, the, uh, the, the companies and organizations or actually the people behind them uh, been building photo websites for the last two years. Most of the effort, uh, maybe somebody else can correct me again, but a lot, a lot of this effort is indeed focused on the blocks and yes. making very interactive, visually pleasing, and uh, uh, also very cool combinations of the whole block system in in Volto. And a lot of work has been done there, which is client work. Uh, and you now see uh, uh, that there are still some 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 uh, larger uh, uh, things to be added uh, uh, to Volto before it's ready for, for Plan 6, uh, which is, of course, the, the editor and uh, 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 we'll talk about it at the sprint. But there's a lot of hidden treasures uh, underneath the surface in all these uh, blocks that are now uh, uh, going uh, to be published in the next six to 12 months, uh, uh, which are, the, the, if, you, uh, if you build a site and you use a component once, you're not going to put too much effort in it to generalize it. But when you have to use it again and again for a second or a third uh, uh, client project or in your institution for a second or third website, then it makes sense to make it a bit more general. And then that's also the time where you, for example, put it on the collective so yeah. with Volto a lot of work has been going on but it's all in these blocks and in these client projects that will uh, uh, certainly come uh, become more much more visible uh, once plan 6 is released yeah so and that's the, uh, and, and last uh, I think two episodes ago we talked about the search block the faceted search block in, in Volto uh, so they, they're discussing very in, in detail what is required for for a specific block to actually uh, land in the core uh, of Volto? So I'm 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 happy that they are uh, not just okay. You have a new block, just throw it in. Let's ship it with that. Uh, they're really doing their due diligence. I'm happy about that. Yeah. So Philip, that's the Volto news update. There will be a lot more Volto uh, development coming up. Uh, let's move to our uh, our next subject, which is the events. Uh, I'll reshuffle it a bit and I'll continue with uh, uh, with Volto. Uh, there will be two sprints uh, next month. One will be the uh, uh, Bushy Chunk Sprint to finalize classic UI and ma mainly backend subjects. But of course, you can do always anything you want on the sprint subject. But at the beginning of May, there will be another Beethoven Sprint. Finally, after two years of absence and working mostly virtual, we'll be uh, gathering again in 
Bonn in Germany at the Kit Concept Office, I assume. If they still have space, or maybe they, I, I, I didn't ask uh, Timo or, or Victor or anybody else yet uh, how they're going to do that, but it will no, be it will be in Bonn. And I still have, I still got my uh, spot. Uh, I'm not sure how many, how, how big their office, uh, how many office uh, people they, they can fit. I think they said 20, and we were already way over 20, so they maybe get uh, getting a different location, or we just cram us all in one room. It's going to be exciting to finally see like real people. Uh, in 3D again, <laughs> it's going to be the first for me, at least. Live people, live yes. annoying, live annoying people. <laughs> yeah, now that I finally had COVID. No, that will be so, it will be so cool <laughs> finally see people again there as well. Yeah. So there will be work on photo 16 or maybe photo 17 if there's another uh, 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 sem semantic versioning uh, thingy coming up. But at least it will be the version, it will, there will be a lot of work on, on finishing uh, Volto for inclusion in Plan 6. The Slate editor will uh, be the new default editor. Uh, I already saw a few weeks ago Victor doing something on a branch with a new row column grid block, which is, so that's also again the story about many different add-ons being created. And one of those uh, uh, groups of add-ons were the, the how to uh, kind of meta block to organize blocks vertically. There have been a few blocks uh, blocks of those uh, uh, in existence now for Volto, but the plan is to have a new column row grid block in core by Volto, which combines the best of the two or three uh, grid blocks that have been created so far. So that's that, quite that, a bit that of an effort. That's been quite a discussion. I mean, that's oh, been my a feature, big... My feature, I'm, I'm, I'm glad yeah, so... I wasn't part of that because I'm, I'm always very uh, greedy, n not getting um, letting go of my features. Yeah. Like we mentioned, uh, there's image handling source sets uh, uh, to be still looked at. Uh, 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 if, if you remember the presentation by uh, Victor on the PlonConf about Quanta, uh, some of the Quanta things are also going to land. And one yeah. of those things are, are going to land that will be, be worked upon. Uh, and one of the, the, the my, my biggest pet peeve on, on Volto uh, mm -hmm. uh, will be solved then uh, because the uh, Quanta has uh, the concept for a new toolbar. And the idea is to have every block should be able to and register for the default toolbar of its block. And it will solve uh, the issue of the plus sign uh, where you can add a new block in the current block editor that sometimes disappears depending on how big your screen or your browser window is. There is, if you have a, if you notice it, uh, uh, responsive, normally you have like a phone, you have a tablet or you have a desktop. But in desktop, you can resize your, your screen uh, uh, pixel by pixel. And in some cases, when you open a new browser window and you opened a new photo block editor, the plus sign would disappear. Oh God. And it's, it's, is, it's a I'm, minor, it's a minor, minor thingy, but if you're unlucky and, and, and that's how I found out because I, I started testing photo two and a half, three years ago. And I was like, how can I add a new block? And it really took me like 20 minutes to block because I was ju just unlucky by not, not having my, my browser window uh, maximized all the time, but having a, a, a bit, bit smaller and then the plus sign. So I, I've been, been with this issue uh, since the beginning. Uh, and I would be very, very happy to have indeed a general, a generic, concept of, of, of a menu item on each block where you can put all the, uh, the block specific uh, uh, features in. And it will also, uh, I think, move the hand, the handling bar uh, uh, into that part or something else that will solve the, uh, solve this, this, this responsive issue. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to work on uh, checking all the field types, the serialization and deserialization, because they have been grinding an X, uh, having an X to grind, whatever, uh, fighting against that issue for a long time now, where we, we have this, uh, I think, example.content type package with all possible fields, and it never worked in Volto properly. I always had to uncomment like six or seven field types. Uh, this needs to be fixed. So I'm going to go there and hopefully work on that. It's the same thing we've had with Plone for many, many uh, years already that uh, indeed we have a, we have a schema system uh, with dexterity uses that to define a field. But on top of every field, of course, you have to load a widget for the advanced cases. Like I said, the date picker or a relation uh, a picker or a file picker or whatever. Yeah. And that's the same story with Photo or Classic. You, you still need to build the widgets and the widgets uh, can break on, on any small change in the browser or on the back end. So yeah, that's and the data something... needs to be serialized to JSON and deserialized in the right way. And you need to write data uh, vocabulary manager. And oh, there's so much stuff uh, that can go wrong there. It's pretty complex code, actually. 
exactly. Uh, and another thing, of course, uh, uh, that will be focused upon is control panels, because there's still some control panels. Uh, 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 control panels are automatically, the, the, the schema of a control panel is automatically uh, 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 exposed in, in Volto, but there are some specific control panels that it still yes. need to be updated. By the way, control panels are one of the, uh, uh, there are four or five uh, uh, proposals, I think, for Google Summer of Code. For control to, panels to to make a silent small bridge to uh, another uh, event that's currently happening at the moment we have been selected uh, uh, to participate in google of summer of code with the plone foundation and at the i think for already one and a half or two weeks uh, submissions proposals are open for students if they want to apply to google summer of code they have to go to the google summer of code website they have to check our website for the subjects that they uh, are interested in they can contact the mentors but they should then fill in the proposal on the google summer of code website and that's open at the moment uh, other subjects are uh, spread over Classic UI and Volto. There's the Volto control panels. There has been a proposal for students to create new Volto themes, which will be very interesting for me because I'm yeah, not a front end. I'm excited about that. that I'm so cool. horrible at front end, and I'm, all, I'm so happy when I can just peek at somebody else's theme, like, okay, how the heck did you do that? Yeah, oh, that, you that did it like this. so useful. Yeah, so photo themes is a proposal. Uh, there are some adv more advanced subjects. There was one uh, subject put in there that I thought, okay, that was my talk from last year's PlonConf. And I pity the student that thinks uh, he or she should pick this subject. <laughs> Because I have to, I have to beg Maurits now and then to Maurits, can you please look at this? Because I, I can't figure this out myself. Uh, what's going on with exactly the, the the subject on on exporting and importing parts of your plone site? But that's also been one of the lofty proposals. There's a proposal for integrating WebAuth, a new uh, uh, authentication standard, into Plone, championed uh, uh, mentored by uh, Andreas Jung. Uh, uh, Kim Nguyen picked up a, a number of, uh, of proposals uh, to, to mentor and other uh, members of the Plone community have also volunteered to yeah, finally mentor. Finally, the trash can uh, will Google. probably come in to Plone. That would be nice to have. We had a couple of add-ons. Uh, yeah, could, so that's... The discussion about that could go on for, yeah, in, in yeah. detail. I think the, the closing date is, is, is approaching for Google Summer of Code. Yeah, they, they should proposals. have in their uh, proposals pretty soon. I'm not sure about the timeline. Maybe I four guess or the five know. days there. Yeah. And did, we, did we mention the Bush and Shark Sprint? No, we're going to mention it in my, in my, in my mind. I want in to my... mention one other thing coming up first before the uh, Beethoven Sprint at the end of April is oh, yeah, World Plone Day. World Plone Day. Philip. So 14 days from now, Will Plone Day is happening on Wednesday, April 27. And it's going to be a 24 hour online event. And um, yeah, we're supposed to hand in videos uh, really soon. And Oh, I'm you got a request as, as well from somebody who shall not be named, but is very good at yeah, uh, convincing community members to. <laughs> and no, I still no, no. have to. I can, I can do another export import. No, no, no. Uh, I was asked to do that one. I will, I will do the expert import talk now. You can do another one. Okay. I'll do something. I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll think of something. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to, uh, uh, so I, I got a request from, from, uh, people organizing it. I really like the, so that's one of the, 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 the benefits, the benefits of the COVID pandemic. That sounds really bad, but, uh, World Plone Day, uh, has already been a long standing tradition in our community. Uh, but the uh, original idea was to have local events which was done for many years by many active uh, 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 plonistas all around the world, which is very cool. But now with this World Plone Day going virtual and having 24 hours of small, uh, it's like getting another yearly conference for free. Yeah, it's really nice because you can also watch the videos uh, later on. You don't have to be awake 24 hours, which I would have a hard time accomplishing, actually. So I'm excited uh, about that. I, I'll try to pitch in. Yeah, me too. So that's World Plone Day. If you want to uh, participate, uh, maybe I think uh, one, our, our, our pre uh, foundation president is doing uh, most of the technical uh, background stuff for World Plone Day, Enrico Andre. Uh, so if you if you are still interested in uh, in also uh, contributing something, for a small video, screencast, or whatever subject on Plone for World Plone Day. Uh, I think you can contact Erico, uh, contact Sally, contact the market. I think the marketing team will be involved in everything public. So people there uh, and check. Uh, and if you have something interesting uh, you want to contribute, uh, check Discord.
And it doesn't need to be developer oriented. Just do a case oh, no, study. No, 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 no. I, I did this upgrade or this website, and uh, I have no clue about Plum, but uh, I just managed to do something, and now I hate it, and I tell you why. Why not? And we'll definitely listen to something like that. Okay, so that's World Plum Day. 27th of April on Wednesday, then beginning of May, the Beethoven Sprint, and Philip, as you mentioned, uh, at the end, no, at the middle of May, we'll have the yes. Buschenschank Sprint in so Eastern do, do Austria. Do you know what a Buschenschank is? Um, it's, yes. it's like, it's wine. a, a basil it's, it's, it's something to do with wine. Yeah, it's, it's a house where you can drink wine and they can sell you uh, food, but it has to be homegrown. Uh, so they, they can't just... Uh, buy stuff and sell it it has to be produced by them local and, produce uh, yeah local produce so it's uh, it's in the steiermark which is the southeastern part of austria it's pretty far it's near uh, graz and hannes ragam is organizing that uh, i think the whole syslab team is going which is nice uh, seeing them uh, again i'm going actually I'm, I'm going to all the sprints this year because I didn't do anything for the last two week, two years. Basically, I sp spent uh, the last twenty four yes. months in this room. I haven't I haven't left this room. You've um, saved up all your sprint energy, to, you know. I, I was I was really I was planning to go to Bushong finally because I I, I wasn't there. Uh, I hadn't been there before, and then I, I was. But I have two personal things coming up in the weekend before that, and then a bit later also the Beethoven Sprint was announced. Uh, the, co the small company I work for says we try to at least have one of us go to each sprint to to be there. Maurits had already arranged everything to go to the Bushong Sprint. Um, so I will instead uh, uh, go to the Beethoven Sprint. So that's our our, our internal uh, uh, division for this uh, okay, spring. I'll, I'll, meet, I'll meet you both in different locations. That's oh, and then you will go to both. So we'll see you in both locations. I'll indeed. probably be burned out after the second sprint. And I really want to see Eastern Austria uh, then next it year. It is so nice. It's, yes, I'll, and, I'll and the wine to... is so good. There's a fridge that, that is like loaded with wine. And after these four days or five days of sprint, uh, the fridge is basically empty and we are full. So that's, uh, that's the plan uh, like every year. Uh, but the, uh, since this uh, spring there is no uh, plone open garden there is no abundance of sprints for some there's these two and um there uh the, the timing is really good for for me so i can attend both i'm pretty happy about that but there's more happening uh, and actually the most important thing happening right now um and i actually mean more important than developing the next grid block and the final touches of plone 6 classic is the documentation uh i think it's the most important talk for the task for the next couple of months before we re release the final version of plone 6 is the effort to update the docs um fred you already mentioned that if you want to look at the current state it's six dot def dash docs.plone.org we'll have to put that in the show notes, it's, not, it's not the most convenient thing to remember that's why i i i, I mentioned uh, just go to docsfoltofcms.com because it's now uh, a, a forward link to that one and i think that's also yeah. a, a tiny dot slash uh, uh, too many uh variation d's. variation dot dash that shows def docs it's too many d's it's the 4d uh, website basically uh, we should we need a tiny url for that so a, a lot of really excellent work has gone into that and we need every uh, like we the community plone needs everyone's help to finish the docs uh there's really excellent features like a automatic life preview built by what is it a sl yeah, something is deployed to Netlify. Uh, Netlify, uh, you see, yeah. Netlify. That's what I, meant, what I was going to say. There's, there's a variation on, on with dots and slashes, which yeah. shows you a kind of preview thingy, which is not the live other one that you get forwarded from, for example, from the, the, the photo uh, documentation. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of really, really tedious uh, and difficult, but very interesting work has been done uh, the last months uh, by the documentation team uh, 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 to updates Katja, and have Katja the Katja and Steve uh, uh, indeed to uh, to have the, the the whole mechanics behind the documentation around it. So we've swift, shifted Finally. to a new documentation format. It is now from restructured text to markdown enhanced rich text something which I it's yeah. a brief I think with we can still use RST. 
you can still use RST, but the main uh, language is, is much easier. It's, as you said, it's automatically deployed. What I mentioned before, uh, things are pulled from the Volta repository docs directory to have it nicely integrated in, in, the, in the part. But now, indeed, the, 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 I wouldn't say final, but the next step is indeed to, to fill in uh, the, the different chapters there. Yeah, um, move right and move documentation that we have in that so it's filled with life and we don't have to uh, bow our head in shame when we do the final I release. still still wonder if so there's, there's, there's a, a sprint to going to be organized yeah, but is there is there do you have you heard if there may be a sprint going to be organized on the on the contents on the documentation contents could be i I'm, I'm actually not sure would um, be interesting maybe yeah okay um, so that's um i think that's that's the upcoming events philip yeah that is the upcoming events so we have one, one one final thing one more thing uh, one more thing. IPhone. Uh, no. <laughs> that was April 1st. You're way too late. It's April 13th. Come on. No the, April Fool's the, days the anymore. Phone. The blown, the blown phone. phone. No, 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 yeah. no. Philip, um, uh, do you remember we, we are... had we had uh, Philip von Weitershausen do a talk about the uh, Firefox phone that they were developing uh, when we had At the conference the oh, yeah. in, I don't know, uh, San Francisco? Uh, sadly, that died with uh, like many other things in this world. We've had I've... so many. We've had so many strange things on Plan Conference keynotes. We'd had a uh, speed car, uh, yes. this fastest car in the world. We've had uh, like tiny, nano tiny satellites, nano satellites. Nano satellites. We've had. Yeah. Uh, we had Brandon Rhodes with it, many interesting subjects. But Philip, <laughs> uh, we're, 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 uh, we should watch out that we're not catching up or, or, yeah, or, or just, are adding um, up our time from mm -hmm. the last podcast as well. Our That's final true. subject, add-ons. You wanted to mention an add-on that is already compatible with Plan 6. Yes, and everybody knows it. It's Collective Easy Form. There was a release a couple of days ago, uh, ago uh, version 4.0. It supports Plan 5.2 and 6. And it, yeah. That, that's basically it. That's easy form and it really works nicely. But there are two things that I want to mention that are uh, making you maybe happy for the future because there is a Likert field that is incoming. There's a pull request by Godfroy. Hey, Godfroy, stop doing Bitcoin. Uh, merge that pull request. Finish it. Um, you can pay so, him in Bitcoin. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> So uh, a Likert field, if you didn't know that, there's it's, it's a grid like, um, do you like this very much? Not so much. Uh, it's super. And there's a couple of questions. So basically, you have a table and you can do some some rating in there. That's a, uh, a Likert field that's coming in. We used to have that in Plone Form Gen. And also, which is re really nice, uh, Mike Testapman is starting to work on conditional fields and hopefully also field values because uh, me and uh, him, we have a... Uh, uh, we have clients who want that, so we pulled our resources, and he's starting to work uh, to work on that. So we'll at some point have conditional fields. So if you say uh, like the, the typical, if you have uh, ananas on your pizza, you can't have bacon or something else. Uh, Cra crazy conditions that are not allowed in this if you, case. If you order certain kinds of pasta in Italy, you're not allowed to. Yeah, okay, don't mention yeah, yeah. that. No, no, exactly. No, 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 we have switched uh, a lot of our customers to, over to Matomo, or at least yeah. installed Matomo parallel to, to other analytics software. And uh, we're now experimenting with, it's, it's a premium module for Matomo, uh, but uh, you can do form and uh, anonymous, of course, anonymous form analytics in Matomo, where you can see exactly who, when people started, uh, uh, visited the form, started entering data in the form, try to submit it, and finally do a conversion. And my tiny contribution there was to edit the, the name field so that the name is automatically picked up by Matomo. So you get one nice large list of all the easy forms uh, in your Plone website. That is, that is certainly useful. It's uh, especially really if you're niche. selling stuff. It's, yes, it's, 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 it's one thing, but I, I really like the, the way Matomo is doing that by, uh, by having uh, 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 analytics there, but still anonymous. I mean, you disconnect yeah. the whole contents of the form from there was somebody that finally 
converted on your form, but you don't care exactly uh, what he or she was exactly buying in the form or doing. It's so GDPR that's, uh, compliant. Exactly, GDPR compliant. So there is another uh, small uh, pl a plugin for easy form, or actually for all kinds of forms. I think Maurits wrote that. Uh, it's Collective Honeypot. At some point, so uh, look at that if you don't want to use uh, H Captcha or Google. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Captcha thingy. Recaptcha. Re Recaptcha. Re uh, Honeypot, it adds these hidden fields that robots will uh, fill in and then it's obviously invalid because a normal human would never enter something in that field because it says, please don't enter anything and it's actually hidden by CSS and stuff like that. So that's really nice. It plugs yeah. in with uh, Z3C form and yeah. easy form. So you, don't know, you don't know this, Philip, but this is another new add-on. This add-on has been uh, around with, because it's just internal, yeah, yeah, one, which, which Maritz, Maritz created this one, I think even maybe for Plone 3 already Already as an experiment. Yeah, yeah you, you said it's we really had it. old. But I, I really about old. that just last week. So for me, it is brand new. It's I'm brand excited new. about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, let's skip that and I think we should close it. And, yeah, well, well uh, one, one thing I would really yes. want to mention is, uh, uh, again, Setsi Build Art 3, uh, also created by, because you're, you're wanting, you want Godfra to merge the Likert stuff, but he has merged something very uh, much more important, which is all the, most of the Setsi Build Art 3 thing. And Maritz has been uh, 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 also on top of it by uh, having the fixes and, and things done in the, in the uh, several Setsi Build Art 3 release candidate releases, also in use in build out core dev and implant six alpha four uh, which is very important to test drive it because the the le last six to 12 months have been a bit rocky on the uh, uh, python packaging index and the wheel and the uh, egg distributions where pip or setup tools or disk utils or wheel or any other thingy that's still a dependency broke up something small. We've had a huge issue with the dependency resolver that Maurits and other uh, core Plone developers have been working on to fix that, which is why where Plone Base comes from. But now it seems that we are in a kind of going, converging to a stable state. So Alpha 4 has set the build out uh, uh, three point uh, release candidate three. We have the latest setup tools, setup tools uh, 62. We have wheel 37.1 and they all, and, and pip 22.0.4. And those four all work together nicely. No more dependency thingies, no more strange issues so far, at least uh, to have a final, to have a stable uh, 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 package uh, install story again. But it's been a bit rocky and it's been to, to the uh, annoyance of a lot of people where so things worked and then two days later, uh, everything breaks down because of a small change. So thank you, so, Godfra. Thank you, many others. Uh, I think we've survived the whole uh, uh, packaging uh, infrastructure upgrade that has been going on for the last uh, six to 12 months. And Plown seems to be fairly uh, uh, seamlessly installable again. Yeah, um, I just realized that we uh, we missed an event. We, we didn't miss it. We didn't mention it because it happened today. And I'm not talking about the weekly Wednesday classic sprint thingy, but there was a Zope sprint today that I just found on Plone.org. I saw the email, but I totally missed that. So I'm sorry about that. Um, and they were, I'm not sure who who, was, who, who joined, uh, but uh, they, they sprinted remotely. Uh, um, Michael Hobbits uh, championing the whole thing uh, again. Thank you, Michael. And uh, the m one of the main uh, tasks was to port Zoop to Python 3.11. I was joking already. today that we should use Python 6, 6 because we're using uh, Tiny MCE 6, uh, Plown 6, uh, ES 6, uh, but there is no Python 6. So, uh, but 3.11, uh, they're working on that and also migrating to GitHub Act as the CI system, which is obviously everyone is doing that, um, which is good. So that obviously happened today. Uh, I hope they made great progress and thanks for all the work. Yeah, that's let's really, that's, that, let's wrap it. But to, 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 to mention a bit more about SOAP, I mean, that's the, the whole Python release process has been speeding up since they uh, uh, decided to have at least a yearly release or even a sub yearly release. And, uh, uh, Zope is, is the, the Zope team is 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 providing Plone a lot of uh, 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 
servers there where they are doing the difficult part of adapting to each new Python version because SOAP is doing the low level parts and that's where you have the most risk of, of breaking something on, on the new Python version. So uh, uh, the whole supporting Python 3.10 is done by switching on 5.2 to 6 to SOAP 5. Now again, this print is being done also to, to um, go for the next Python version because we will have an incoming Python, new Python version every year. Yeah. So really important if you are not if you are using Plo, but if you're also uh, knowledgeable about, about SOAP, also check out, and I think that we should really make that more official. Dark the third, we, we also talk about front end or classic UI or Volto, but the SOAP theme is is uh, is also providing a lot of benefits to us. Yeah. Also, the there were like tiny changes. So when I when we uh, released uh, Plan Six Alpha Four, I released uh, I realized uh, tiny changes in the ZMI that made working with the ZMI much much easier. Just usability stuff. Um, so nice. Um, yeah. Great, great. We, we should focus on that at some point uh, more. So uh, let's let's wrap this up. Uh, let's finally hope, wrap up. Yes, we, we finally added, we after added our time a, for two, two podcasts two into hour one. podcast almost. Uh, let's do that f when we do the final release. Um, I hope you will no uh, visit the 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 World Plone Day event in uh, the interwebs, and uh, we'll hope see uh, one or two of you at the one of these upcoming sprints um consider going there uh if there is still space i'm not sure about that can't say that i uh, can't promise but i think that in if, like with other sprints well there will also be a virtual uh there will be a virtual setup for people also to participate yeah and keep in mind, the conference in October is coming up at some point. So um, free some time for that. And I hope you stay safe and well. And I uh, see you uh, soon, Fred. And it was a pleasure. And yeah. So one month hiatus and everything feels like new and shiny, no? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Let's, 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 let's keep uh, hope to stick again to our monthly schedule. Cool. Philip, thanks. See you next month. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.